Hey there, everybody. Franklin Taggart here. It is late at night on a Wednesday. I still have about a half a cup. I'm not going to finish it, but it's helpful to have right now. Um, I just got home from a from hosting a Songwriters in the Round event in Fort Collins, and uh, Songwriters in the Round was something that um, I really... Um, I learned about when I lived in Nashville in the late 90s. And I have to tell you, it, it is still probably my favorite way to, to hear music and to be introduced to music. Um, when I lived in Nashville, I played at Songwriters Nights probably six nights a week, maybe more. <laughs> And since I was new to town, I was usually one of the last ones to go on the list. I would very often be in the last one or two rounds uh, before closing time, which meant that it, I was getting started at around 2 o'clock or 2.30 in the morning. And uh, there were still about five people in the audience. But it was a wonderful way for me to learn about both songwriting and what it means to be a professional songwriter and what the experience of of learning the craft of songwriting is um so tonight was just a wonderful event for me i i i was delighted with it um and i shared the night with three other writers uh, andy sado um megan rice and brian david collins and I just had the best time. The thing that was really um, beautiful to me, and, and it's something that I have experienced many times, at, especially at Songwriters in the Round, is that you get to hear the song in a way that you don't hear it anywhere else. The other thing that happens in Songwriters Nights like this, when you have more than one songwriter that's playing, is that we tend to play off of each other, and so one person will do a song and it will remind the next person of a song and it'll remind the next person of the song. And there's this continuity that forms that's kind of uh, both interesting and intriguing. But it was a, it was a wonderful evening and um, I'm grateful to my friend Liz Barnes for inviting me to host for, for her as she's out on the road for a minute. Um, but there were other things that were I was thinking about on the way home from that. And one of them is that I've always enjoyed songwriting as long as I've been involved in, involved with it. I started writing songs when I was fairly young. I remember writing songs when I was around 11, 12 years old. And I remember buying a, a book of pop lyrics um, that that came from Scholastic Magazine. Some of you will remember that, especially if you're in the U.S. Scholastic Magazine, um, every, I don't know, about once a month, you'd get an order form that had books on it. And I ordered a book of pop lyrics that came with a, a record that had four songs on it. And the songs on that record were, there was a Temptations song, there was also um, uh, Let's Get Together, um, and there was the song Atlantis by Donovan and the song on there that, um, that became and still is one of my favorites was the song Blackbird by the Beatles. That song for some reason has always affected me deeply. The vibrations of it, the, the sound of the guitar, the, um, the beautiful melody and there's almost um there's like a hint of blues to it as well so you've got this this almost classical guitar part with this popular melody over the top and then there's this blues lick that happens in the melody um on the very last line of the chorus and it just gets me it gets underneath my skin and um, it stays with me. And as I was coming home tonight, I was just thinking about that book and how much 
it influenced me because it, at that time, when I read that book and the, and saw all the lyrics, um, I think it had maybe 40 or 50 songs in it. But when I read those lyrics, there was something about that that captivated me. And so I started to write my own lyrics. I didn't play the guitar yet. I was still a couple of years away from getting my guitar. But that was also the time when I knew that I had to have one. Um, and then what was really interesting is that for several years in high school and college, I didn't write any lyrics at all. I was mostly playing instrumental. And a part of that was that I was kind of embarrassed about the sound of my singing voice. It really hadn't come into its own. It hadn't matured. And I, you know, I'd never had occasion to practice singing very much. So I didn't feel like that I was a very good singer at that point. So I focused mostly on the guitar, which meant that I played a lot of scales and I played a lot of, you know, a lot of tunes. I started to discover jazz and all of that and got really excited about it. So my focus in high school and college was mostly jazz guitar. Well, when I was, um, I don't know, in my early 30s, uh, I went through a period of separation and uh, reconciliation and separation and divorce. And it was then that songwriting became my, my way of communicating my inner world and understanding it and sorting it out. And I didn't really care at that point whether my songs were good and I didn't really care whether my songs actually, I didn't start singing them, you know, publicly till I was probably 33 or 34 years old. And even then I was just so, I was, I was so nervous, just so scared. And I had people that criticized my voice and I had people that, you know, had, had opinions, but at that point in my life, it was like I was singing for my life. And I was, I was songwriting for my life. And that got me through. The, the singing and the songwriting got me through those years. And as I was learning how to, how to write songs, and I, as I was getting more comfortable on stage, all of a sudden, I found that I was starting to get opportunities to sing solo, which was a new thing. I had never had those opportunities when I was younger. And I've, I've been doing songwriting now for a whole bunch of years. You know, you've heard the stories about the disruptions and interruptions to my music career, but... Um, the thing that has stayed true the whole time is that I've always, there's something about songwriting that has always felt like the most personal thing that I have. And so when I get up on stage and I'm performing my own songs and when people don't listen, it hurts. And in most cases, when I've been playing in public in the last 15 years, 20 years, in most cases, the majority of people that are in the audience are not listening. And I think I got tired of that. Well, the beautiful thing about tonight was that it was a quiet room and people were there to listen and a connection was made, and it was a deep connection, and it felt wonderful. And I think that for anyone who creates, sometimes those connections happen, sometimes they don't, um, but when they do, there's, there's a kind of sustenance that happens on an emotional and spiritual level that we probably don't get anywhere else. And so tonight I'm filled with gratitude that I had had a chance to play four of my songs for a crowd that appreciated them and really absorbed them and took them in. And 
I, I hope for you, I hope for you that there is something like that that is your way of making sense of the internal world and sharing it externally and being able to to have some kind of a voice for the things that mean the most to you. That's really what I hope for everyone. So I'm going to leave you with that tonight. It is a very late night for me, and I've got an early morning tomorrow. But um, as always, your, your attention and your time um, are just amazing gifts to me. So thank you for that. And I'll be back with you tomorrow with another coffee break. Um, got an interesting uh, and wonderful interview coming up on Friday on your own best company that you're not going to want to miss. So that said, have a good whatever it is where you are. So long.